fellow Drupalers, this is Natalie for FriendlyDrupal.com and this is a new screencast which is actually a follow-up to the previous video on installing Agar and a few folks asked for the tutorial on how to actually use Agar so that's what we're going to be doing today we're going to take a look at the Agar front-end and such tasks as creating platforms and administering sites Agar actually uses a customized Drupal installation to manage Drupal. So it's kind of eat your own dog food thing. And as you can see, it really looks uh, kind of like your standard Drupal site, only with custom interface and other options. As far as I can tell, the top menu is done using the admin menu module. And it's a really nice module. I highly recommend using it. Well, site building and site configuration should be familiar to you, but first thing I would do after installing Agar is to go to hosting and look at the enabled features. The defaults are usually enough. I would enable site aliasing because that's a convenient feature. Cron queue is a must. SSL support, I'm not gonna be using it right now, and I'm not using Nginx. Experimental feature is something that Agar can do, but it's kind of in a uh, not in production ready mode. So use it to your own risk. So let's save it. The way Agar manages Drupal site is by breaking them into components. And there are three main types of components. They are servers, platforms, and sites. So when you first install Agar, you will have at least one platform by default which is actually Hostmaster and it's created on one of the servers so we have also one server by default and this server has both uh, database and web server what's cool is you can actually have database servers separately from web servers which allows for um, distributed um, hosting environment and of course, if you go to sites, you will see just one site, uh, which is actually this very uh, site, the Agar front end, which is using the Hostmaster profile. And if you click on it, you can see all the information here. You can also run different tasks. Verify is probably, is probably the most common one. And so once I clicked on the task, it's been added to the hosting queue and it's going to be executed on uh, schedule the way you set up uh, the queues usually every minute the queues are set up right here and this is a very nice interface using ajax so it sort of updates updates on the fly so how do you actually go about creating a new drupal site using the agar front end well the way it works you need to have a platform which exists on a server. Fortunately, we already have default servers for database and Apache, but we currently have only one platform for Hostmaster, and we don't really want to use it for our regular Drupal installations. So let's create a platform first, and you can do that from Content Management, Create Content Platform, and of course, this sort of makes sense because this is Drupal and you use Node for everything. You can use one of the two methods to create a platform. You can either create a Drupal installation manually on the server, or you can use a make file. And if you used Drush make before, you'll know what it is. It's just a text file that describes uh, your Drupal code such as Drupal core and modules and themes and any external libraries. Let's try the manual method first. So I have opened the terminal and I'm going to become the Agar user now. So now I'm in an Agar home directory and you can see we already have a directory called platforms which is currently empty so let's use drush to download drupal core 
this is going to download the current version of Drupal. And right now it's 7.8. When you create a platform, you have to give it a name. Let's call it Drupal 7. And the publish path, let's check it again. But it should be something like var eager platforms. And I believe it was Drupal dash seven one eight. Save it now. Now we have to wait for Agar to verify the new platform. Verify is probably the most frequent task on Agar. If you want to find out more about it, you can check the docs. So you can verify servers, platforms, and sites. And it does a, a few things here, but basically the main idea is to make sure that your um, components are running fine. Say you modify settings for a site and something goes wrong and you can verify the site and the settings will be recreated. So now it's green, which means it runs successfully. And if we go back to the platform, let's, let's take a peek inside. Oh, uh, you can see it's pretty much the, your regular Drupal installation. It did add a few um, files here, such as this Drusher C. And, well, these files kind of have the description of the platform, including the modules installed, or um, the modules existing on the platform. And if we go to the size directory, we just have the default both directory before it appears like a Drupal site before you start installing and generate settings and create uh, the database. You don't have to install the site manually, Agar is going to do that for us. And now we're going to install the site using the new platform. Let's go to create site. Let's just call it Drupal 7. Never mind the client, you, this is needed for commercial hosting sites. This is a bit tricky. You might be wondering where the heck uh, Drupal 7 is because we just created the platform using Drupal 7. Well, I'm not sure I like the way it works, but first you have to choose the install profile. So if you choose standard, then Drupal 7 is going to show up here. Same for minimal or testing. So profile first, then um, the Drupal version. So you just have to remember which installation profile belongs to which version of Drupal. Uh, here you can also choose the database server. Right now you only, you don't really have a choice, just the default database. A domain analysis, this can be used, for example, if you wanna redirect www.yourdomain.com to yourdomain.com. So we won't be using it right now, but I do use it for my production sites. So, uh, looks like we filled it out. So let's save it. And as you can see, the installation task is about to run. Meanwhile, we can go back to the terminal. Since I'm using a local host here, let me add the new domain to the host file. Uh, and you, you can see how it's been run live, which is kind of nice. I really think the interface is very neatly done for Agar. Okay, looks like we're in business. We get the site administration window, log into our new site from here. And the first time you do that, you get the reset password link. Let's just enter whatever password you want to use here. And save it. And 
you can uh, just uh, poke around, uh, but this is pretty much our new Drupal 7 site, just like it would have been with the regular installation. Let's see what's going on in our site directory. Well, uh, you can see the Drupal 7 site appearing here. And this is the key concept of Agar. Any site you have is going to be a part of a multi-site system. So you have a root installation of Drupal as a platform, and then you can have multiple sites for the platform, and all of them would be living in the site directory. Let me go to the directory. And you can see all the um, all the standard options here, all the standard subdirectories such as files, modules, libraries. One thing to keep in mind is that if you try to change settings PHP, you can see that instead of the regular password username, you have you have this array generated by Agar. The actual information can be found in uh, Drush or CPHP. And you also have the information about install module and so on and so forth. And now let me show you how to create a platform using Drush Make. I've actually already created a simple make file, which lives in uh, make files directory and see it, it uses press blow as a Drupal distribution. This is just a text file which describes the Drupal installation, you can see module themes and libraries and you can specify the directory to download the uh, modules to, you can use uh, you can just download the file directly from the internet. You can specify the version. There is a lot more to Drush Make. I really suggest you get familiar with that Drush extension on Drupal.org. So I'm gonna go back to Agar Frontend. And by the way, I recommend running a verify task. And again, you know what I do? I do menus. Navigation, I expand created content. And then it's gonna be expanded. So, okay, platform. Again, let's name it Press Flow 6 and specify the path to the make file I'm gonna be using for this platform. Now I also have to enter the publish pass. And this time the directory doesn't really exist. Agar is gonna create it for us. Once the platform is verified, we can go and create a new site and you can actually see an install profile as press flow and we have reached the end of the screencast and I hope to show you more about Agar in the next installments until later, this was Natalie for FriendlyDrupal.com.